uh, super update video. Um, so a lot has been done since I last did an update video. I've been mostly wiring the car and that's kind of the reason why I haven't made a video in a while because it just takes a while to wire and figure out, you know, I was taking my time. Um, so pretty much cut right to the chase. I have some good news and bad news. Um, so we'll go, we'll go with the good news first. So the car is all wired. Um, go over the wiring real quick. Got start actually from start from in here. So here's my positive cable. I got a distribution block. I've got power in the fuse box. I've got another. I did have another wire going on the starter, but I took that out. Should tell you guys why in a minute. Um, and then fuse box. It's bolted down now, but I went through the whole fuse box, connected some wires. Um, you know, made sure everything was good. I, there's some wires that were messed up. Some wires have been cut. Dope that all off, figured that out, checked all the fuses. Um, I had to put in this custom plug here. This was cut, someone cut the factory uh, fuse box plug. Um, I mean, I had to rewire oil level sensor. I had to um, wire some lights in here. I've still got to get the harnesses for the parking lights, and I had to go through this whole mess. So. I don't know if you guys remember, but there's some cut wires here I was pretty concerned about, but I figured out they're actually just the, um, so this is a three wire contraption here, and, um, assuming it's a light, looks like it was a light, maybe like fog light or something, so I'm not too concerned about that, and I also have extra wires here, and the, these are on the other side too, um, those are probably just parking lights or maybe blinker or something, so I'm not really concerned about that, which is a big relief, I didn't know if it was something more serious. Over here, I have the exact same wires, but I have two extra wires, which I'm assuming are for like the washer, you know, motor, the windshield washer. So, you know, whatever, not really a big deal. So yeah, still gotta hide this cable right here. Um, yeah, I've done a lot of wiring. Let me show you guys in here, kind of work our way through the car. So, I mean, a lot of people said I shouldn't wire it, but I kind of just, one thing led to another. I started wiring one thing, did the other stuff I knew how to do, stuff I could figure out, and ended up wiring the whole car. So, um, yeah, I got my gauge hooked up. I've got the uh, where is it? VTI gauge right here. Pretty psyched about that. Hooks right up to my harness. You can pretty much display anything you want. Niter hooked up. I got my AEM Infinity. Um, I've got relay I've got my for the transmission changes the output of the you know the speedometer interface universal speed interface yeah got that hooked up um, I looked at Grandis Racing and a video on it and I just you know I mean these are all labeled power ground sensor ground you know all that and then he said on one of his videos he had it on output 5 so I'll try that um, everything else is pretty much plug and play plugged everything in I got my I hooked up my fuel um, fuel pump, you know, s sending signals, or you want to call them, tell the fuel pumps to come on. Speaking of fuel pumps, going to the trunk, interior, ripped everything out, um, took all the ECU boxes I didn't need, like the traction control, ABS, alarm system. Um, here is got the fuel pumps all wired up everything's all good powerhouse racing fuel pump harness hooked right up to the positive table uh, cable um, optima battery got my grounds I ground it to both the fra frame rails everything's grounded every ground is sanded hooked up I got a breaker on here so I can shut it on and off it's off right now um, yeah and then I have to the one thing I still have to wire is the uh, electric fans got them sitting in here um, the powerhouse racing harness didn't really fit. I don't know if they sent me the wrong harness, but it just straight up doesn't fit IS300 fans. I have an IS300 over there, and it didn't fit those fan plugs either. Um, didn't fit the aftermarket ones, so um, probably going to be ordering a um, Chase Bay's electric fan harness. Um, it's uh, it they give you plugs, the female and male. I'll just wire them into these electric fans, and they also give you a temperature, so it comes on temperature, it comes on with a switch. It's just like really nice. So, if anybody's looking for a powerhouse racing electric fan kit, 
probably be selling that. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all the wiring. And so now we can get to the, see, camera's falling. I was gonna say, we can get to the sad part now. Um, so we, uh, yesterday my dad and I, I we hooked the battery up. Um, I popped, I, you know, turned the breaker on. Everything clicked, everything came on. I sat in the seat for the first time, turned the uh, key to accessory, turned it to on, the, everything started beeping. It's like a car, it's crazy to hear like sounds coming from the car, lights, stuff lighting up, the interior lights were lit up, and it was crazy. I go to start it, all I hear is a you know, like a loud, from the starter, um, almost like the car has, you know, battery's bad, you know, when you're like, oh, you need a jump. Battery's not bad though, it's a brand new battery. And I knew it wasn't bad, so I tried it again. Sure enough, clank, nothing. So that's when we go to the front of the car. And we want to see if we um we wanted to see if the engine had, you know, if we could rotate the engine by hand with a breaker bar. Put the breaker bar on, wouldn't budge, we disconnected the serpentine belt. Checked all the pulleys, maybe one of the pulleys, maybe someone sees. Nope, all the pulleys spin freely. Try it again. Wouldn't budge. Um, so we took the spark plugs out, make it a little bit easier so you're not fighting the compression. Took all the spark plugs out. Again, wouldn't budge. Poured oil in it, as people say. Um, oil can soak into it if it's seized from sitting for so long, which it was, it was only sitting for 10 months since I last tried. You know, since I when we installed the transmission. I used the breaker bar to move, so we can put the, um, the I think the bol the bolts in for the flywheel. So the, car, the the engine had been, you know, moved around like just 10 months ago. 10 months isn't really that long for an engine to sit, I don't think. But yeah, so we took the spark plugs out, wouldn't budge, poured oil in, soaking in right now. You know, I'll probably try in a couple of days. I stayed away a couple of days, still wouldn't budge. Um, and yeah, I took the starter out. Um, to see if the starter maybe wasn't retracting. Starter was retracted, had nothing to do with it. Looked at the flywheel, see if the flywheel was hitting the block. Flywheel's not hitting the block. Um, so, long story short, looks like the engine is seized. Um, I don't know how it got seized. Um, it's, I, I mean, I do. The only possible reason is that it was sitting. And it got seized from rust, I guess. We do live, you can see my turbo here is all rusted. Um, and maybe moisture got in there and rusted it, locked it up. And this thing won't budge. I mean, I've got this breaker bar on it. Uh, it's like a three foot breaker bar. Using my leg, I started tightening the crank bolt, which is like 220 foot pounds. I mean, it looks like it won't budge. Um, so, let an oil soak in for now. Um, but I think I'm gonna have to take the engine apart and figure out why it's seized. I mean, see if there's rust in there. Even if I did get it unseized, it could have, you know, it's, I don't know if I'd be comfortable running it. I mean, it, it could have some major damage to it. The piston rings could be messed up and probably, the engine would probably burn oil and, you know, so it is what it is. I mean, it's not my first, um, you know, issue with the car. Definitely won't be my last, so. I mean, I wasn't expecting, I'll probably end up building the engine, probably put in, do like a mild build, because I mean, we're gonna have the engine apart anyways. It's kind of concerned with the rods with this turbo anyways, with the quick spool, so I'll definitely probably change out the rods and pistons and the cams. I was gonna do the cams anyways, but yeah. Um, so, kind of bummed out. I mean, I'm, I was happy that the wiring went all well. I took my time with the wiring. I learned a ton about wiring. Everything worked, all the lights came on, everything, no shorts, nothing. I mean, the car would have cranked if the engine wasn't seized. It would have, probably would have started. Um, so, it's, you know, it really sucks, but it is what it is. So I guess I'm gonna be pulling the engine now, um, which really shouldn't take me a long time at all since, um, you know, everything's brand new. I know how everything goes. I could disconnect and reconnect this engine, you know, without a second thought, because I've, I've done everything on it, you know, obviously. So. Yeah, um, yeah, it sucks, but it is what it is. I guess it makes for good YouTube con content, you know, a little bit more entertaining for you guys. So, um, yes, uh, so 
probably end up doing the timing belt and water pump and all that shit when the engine's out. I'm gonna do the rear main seal. I didn't really do as much as many like things that I probably should have when the engine was out. I was kind of more focused on the turbo and all the aesthetics and performance stuff. Um, so, if you guys have any suggestions on um, what you guys think I should do, I don't think it's the transmission either. I mean, we took our time installing the transmission. It goes into every gear. Um, I can spin the drive shaft in neutral. I can't spin it when it's in gear. You can put it in gear, you can put the clutch in, you can spin the drive shaft. The clutch is engaging, disengaging, it's going into gear, it's going into neutral. It's Everything's working with the transmission. Um, so I don't think it's the transmission. I was hoping it was the transmission. I mean, I was hoping maybe we put the flywheel on backwards, the flywheel's in the block, or something like that, but it's it's not, it's the engine. So, um, because when we had the transmission, we had the transmission stalled on the ground, and I was we were spinning it back then, so, you know, it's probably the engine probably corrosion so yeah um make sure you guys like and subscribe and you know comment with any questions any suggestions um and i'll be doing you know another follow-up video I'll probably pull the engine again um i definitely am going to be pulling the engine actually i'll probably start pulling it today so i'm going to come out with a new video soon with the engine pulled uh, i'll be all too familiar sight of this car without an engine and yeah, we're gonna take it from there. I'll probably take the engine apart myself. I don't really have anything to lose. I mean, the engine's already kind of junk if it is seized. So, take it apart myself. Um, take it one step at a time. I mean, I'm gonna. Tr we're gonna try to rotate it. You know, disconnect the transmission. Try to free it up again, just to make sure it's not the transmission. But I don't think it is. So, if it is the engine, like I said, I'll take it apart, see what's wrong. Obviously, I'll let you, let you guys know. I'll show you what's wrong with it. Um, and yeah probably end up rebuilding it i don't know if i'd rebuild it myself but probably not but you never know so yeah make sure you guys subscribe got a lot in store for the channel and uh yeah thanks for watching